So module 25, here in this module, we'll discuss about corpus and flexion. As we have already discussed earlier, how handmade corpus have been used in lexicography, dictionary comparison. Here we are in the frame of the computational lexicography, we are trying to understand how corpus developed in different ways can contribute in the work of dictionary comparison. So here we will try to be more uh, specific with references to Indian languages particularly Bangla and try to show how corpus can uh, uh, can or in fact being used for dictionary works when we are trying to develop a digital dictionary. First thing is that what is the benefit of using corpus in dictionary making? So why we didn't need to have corpus in dictionary making? So we can point out that since corpora are available in presentable form, we can extract all relevant and authentic and typical lexical items with examples of their usages from corpus within a very short span of time. That means within a short span of time, we can collect a large amount of data, large amount of words with a wide range of their sense variations and usage variations, which are very important ingredients for developing a corpus, a dictionary. We can also extract faithful frequency information of words from the corpus to attest their relevance in the language as well as their claim to be included in the dictionary. As we know that we want to have a, a choice of words to be con concluded, uh, to be included into the dictionary. So it is not that all the words which are available in the are not been put in the It's a massive concept. But generally people make a choice or make a selection of the sort of book of them to be considered for the interpretation. So corpus is a very good source to give us uh, the most frequently used forms to be considered for including into the text. Third, we can retrieve quantified information of collocation from corpora to show the patterns of lexical combinations in sentences. Information of this sort is useful to text writers and language learners alike. So corpus also gives a unique opportunity to us to identify the patterns of collocations, patterns of lexical associations, also patterns of lexical generativity. So three important ingredients which we need to be furnished in dictionary. So corpus is the best way where can we can get those things. If we get a post tagged corpus, for example, where all the words are tagged at the parts of the that becomes highly useful for word sense disambiguation as well as for more sensible groupings of the polysemous words and the number of the words in the dictionary. So uh, even if uh, there are large databases that cannot be much useful until the transition is possible. So our second argument or next argument is that it is better that if you have a post tag corpus ready to us. So we can identify all the words who belong to different parts of speech and classify them based on the parts of speech rather than depending on our We can also know how words change their parts of speech based on the context of the words. And we can also, if they have include that information, the dictionary in the whole range of information to showing that how words, polysemous words, or homonymous words change their processes depending on the context of their occurrences in texts. We can retrieve all textual information, register variation, genre, and domain information, and many social linguistic information. That is, user, description, gender, age. Metadata from annotated corpora to supply more accurate information of the words to be presented in the study. Finally, if there is a monitored corpus, we can track how words are being replaced by new set of words in the language. If you have a diacritic corpus or a huge diacritic or monitored corpus, we can find out which words are in the book, 
which words are dying out, which words are coming, which words are also changing their meaning and function with the change of time. It has had many cases you have noted that some words once upon a very much in use but has lost, particularly like in given example at present. Now, because of some advancement in technology and something like that, the ink, Kali of pain ink, is never used. So people are, don't know how this ink is made of or whether this is actually there. And the container that used to keep the ink, uh, liquid ink, which is called Doha, that term is lost forever. So people no more use that particular term because there is no more use. So in our earlier corpus, that particular term is very much frequently used. But in the modern day Bangla corpus, this no, there is no use of the term. So what he, he said is that if you have a diacritic corpus, we can easily trace the change in the lexical stock. Some words were very much in use at certain point of time, but now lost their places, almost obsolete, or simply lost. They are no more in use. On the other hand, some set of words which are very much used at the time now used in different sense, different meaning, different connotations. So those words are still present there, but the original meaning which was originally meant to is no more used at present. And third, we can find out a new set of words which were not present earlier, but now has come into practice, has come into play, come into use. So if you have a diacritic corpus, our lexicographer is far more happy because he can represent the changes of words with the change of time. Lastly, we can use evidences from corpora to complement our observations or repeat the intuitions of earlier dictionary makers. When they found this data, it is not always that they are referred to original actual usages. Sometimes some examples, some usages, some information is actually intuitively gathered. So, with reference to the corpus, we can now find out whether these are true or false. So, there are many exact advantages from using a corpus in lexical compositions. So, if we really want to develop a corpus, a dictionary based on corpus, we need to follow up a systematic procedure, a method, systematic method to do that. Let us identify how we can do that. First, the data analysis. The collection of data from corpus. So for dictionary, we need a large number, large number of words. Say we need a uh, huge number of words uh, in the order of lakhs to be put in the dictionary list. Because we make a final choice, final selection, which words to be put in. And corpus is for this case is the best resource which can give words from all disciplines. So we want lexical stock, not only from natural science or news mass media or social sciences, from all disciplines of language use. Maybe say from creative writings, computer literature, com contemporary literature, natural science, social science, technology, arts, humanities, business, commerce, medicine, newspapers, magazines, advertisement, court proceedings, personal diaries, personal letters, official letters, and many other similar sources. That means our goal is to have an exhaustive lexical list ready at our hand for selections of the appropriate words to be put the list. And this is only possible only when we have a huge large corpus ready for access for us. So what we can have here, we can get, once we this have, we can get all kinds of words we can combine together, compile together and order them in a particular uh, pattern, say alphabetically, order them or frequency based occurrences, ordering. So once we do that, we get the entire list of words available in a language as far as the corpus is concerned. Then we do a certain amount of processing, type token analysis, tokenization, and we can get uh, huge data ready to be put in the dictionary. So there is no other options for us open to we have heard from 
you can get the largest possible collection of words talk of a language so if you if you if you if you always keep in mind that we are talking about a dictionary a dictionary which is a general reference diacritic dictionary it is not a specific dictionary and if it is a general dictionary it's a referential dictionary and it is a both diacritic and synchronic dictionary then definitely the look lexical stock of the dictionary has to be maximum and that maximum lexical stack stock can only be retrieved from an equally well developed general referential monitor corpus. It is not that from the written text we always like to have the word verses. We can also think of words from the spoken text in general sense. As you have noted that there are some words which are normally used in speech but not hardly used in spoken written text. We can also collect those kinds of words from the spoken text if there is a speech corpus. And this speech corpus can be balanced, evenly distributed with data from all kinds of discourses, uh, say from narration, eyewitness accounts, instructions, reminiscence, conversations, arguments, dialects, mimicries, onomatopoeias, and all kinds of varieties. So, first part about the collection of words for developing a general dictionary, referential dictionary, corpus of the best words. Once the lexical stock is ready here to be put, the next important part is selection of lexical stock. As you have already said, all the words that are there at the list are not to be included in this. As you know that certain words are automatic choices, they would come. Certain words are automatically rejected because they are not fit to be considered. Mostly in cases of proper nouns, forget about this, this, those proper nouns, they are usually not included in the dictionary for obvious reasons. We can have a dictionary, separate dictionary, dictionary of proper names. A person names or animal names or plant names or some other things that is a specialist dictionary. But in general, in a normal dictionary, we don't give uh, importance to the proper names to be encoded into the list. So they are obviously they are outside the scope to be included. So it may happen that we are only emphasizing to those uh, words uh, which are more fit to be included. The they are dictionarial words means they have the potential to be included lexicographic words we call them at the same time we need to have a multi the stock of the multi word strings that includes idioms set phrases proverbs and many other constructions like that which may be included in the dictionary so this list also can be possible to prepare from a large corpus so when the a large lexical database is Created, we can classify them single word units, two word units, compound word units, readable word units, multi word units. So, thus we can classify them and generate different stocks. And then, then we can make a selection which are need to be included and which are not to be included in this dictionary. So, the information available from corpora for lexical items for a reference dictionary are head words. Then pronunciation, spelling of parts of speech, morphological information, then grammatical information, definition, synonyms, polysemy, lexical generativity, collocation, usage, idiomatic, and various others, illustration, citations, and even annotations. In all those domains where information are far less than we can directly retrieve those things in the corpus itself. Now, we are talking about the headwords. As you know, what are the headwords which are the, which are allowed to be there in the next? So, headwords actually those normally written in block letters or in bold face and in the left hand side and the other part is the information part of the dictionary. So, those headwords are basically 
collected from the dictionary. Upon corpus. Now, if we give a full list of Edwards, they can be classified into three types: single word units, multi word units, and sometimes the non word units also there. They can be treated as Edwards. So, all those different types, including the when the class of single word units, you can have all types of words, common words, tables, bases, roots, multiple words, sundry words, foreign words, native words, uh, local words, colloquial words, portmanteau words, uh, taboo words, can, genre, and many other types. The huge variables they can be completed with single words and when titled to intend to the list. The multi word words like compounds, reduplicate words, idioms, phrases, proverbs, collocations, quotations, set expressions. They are also uh, treated as multi word words and also entitled to be included into the list of the dictionary. Then there are non word words which are called non words but lexicographic words. Since they are included in the lexicography, in the dictionary, they are treated as lexicographic words but they are normally treated as non words like affixes. Inflection markers, case markers, person markers, plural markers, ten marker, tense markers, aspect, enclitics, particles, abbreviated forms, echo forms, empty words. These are basically non word entities. But they are lexicographic words, but because they are allowed to be included in the All those things can be collected from the May corpus to be included. Then comes the issue of spending. This is a very crucial issue for Indian languages, particularly uh, not so much in cases of British English or American English. Because in those languages, spelling variation is not a very crucial thing. Most of the cases, English has a very fixed spell and everyone follows this. And there might be some variations between British English and American English. But as such, that is not a big problem. You can find out here 200 to 300 words where you can find variations in spelling between British English and American English. But for Indian languages, it is a tough situation to find out how a particular word can have several spellings. So since spelling variation is a very recurrent, common, pertinent or prevalent problem here in Indian languages, corpus is the best place where from we get all alternative variants of a single form. If I am not mistaken, I can give you the languages like Tamil, Telugu, and Bangla. I have noted that minimum variation of spelling is 2 and maximum can go up to 20. I personally have verified my study and found that well, there are at least 5,000 words in Bangla, if not less, which registers the information, ranging from 2 to 20. So, this is a very crucial situation. So, first thing is that we can refer to a purpose to find out how many variations are found for a single word. So, corpus is the best place. I can give an example here that in cases of Bangla, I have noted that uh, the word Kolkata, this particular word has got four different spellings. Or the word Christian has got eight different spellings and all are used quite frequently in the corpus. Now, as a lexicographer, as a dictionary developer, I am really confused to decide which out of many alternatives should be considered for my So there are two alternatives. First thing is that I can select any one of them and give other rest of the seven spelling variations for the word and say that okay, there are other seven, so many spelling variations of the word available in the language. Or if I don't have that possibility, what I can do is that I can select out of those eight alternatives. Now the question is, which one I should select? Again, I will go back to corpus. I will normally ask for the most frequent form, most frequent spelling used in the corpus. That gives a kind of 
uh, attestation that since it is most frequent, that means it has a large, larger uh, usage among the languages. Larger degree of acceptability among the languages. That means people always like to use that particular spell. If this is so, then that can be accepted into the dictionary as the basic spelling and other values being provided there if possible as alternate values. So this is, I can give an example here that uh, in, for our cases we have taken follow for long as the most frequent form of spelling to be considered in the dictionary, keeping the same is four alternative spelling variations as uh, variants of this particular word. So here our argument is that corpus is a good resource wherefore we can find out all the possible spelling variations of a particular word and based on certain parameters, certain conditions, certain reasons, you can select one of those alternatives and also furnish the other variants in the dictionary. Parts of speech is an important area where a dictionary can help you. So we need to provide the parts of speech of the words. Now it is not very easy to identify the exact parts of speech when the word is isolated. So until and unless word is put in a particular context, it is very difficult in, in, in which parts of speech the word belongs. Suppose let us take this some example then from English maybe for uh, better understanding cook. It can be an adjective or a noun. So, in my dictionary, I can call it either adjective or a noun, or give a more general possibilities. Similarly, if we think that uh, there is some word which is more parts of speech variations, then it is always better that we should refer to the corpus to identify in how many different parts of speech it is used. And suppose I can give an example that in Bangla, the word kachi has four different uh, parts of speech which are not normally mentioned in this sentence. So all those different parts of speech actually cleave to the purpose. And all those four different parts of speech as well as their usages in different contexts and in this particular parts of speech are furthest. So information of parts of speech is, is validated by actual example of word in the parts. Parts of speech tag to a word is actually noted in use in the text. That is important. And number of parts of speech identified for a word is also fixed. Because for the purpose of the title, the total range of uh, parts of speech. Then comes the grammatical rules. Normally the standard dictionaries provide very least amount of grammatical rules because they try to be readily accurate. But with reference to corpus, we can get a lot of information about it. Amount of grammatical information, type of grammatical information, and method of presentation of grammatical rules for three important crucial points while we are presenting into the this. So while we are trying to provide the grammatical information, we also provide how it, the morphemes are combined in which sense it is, whether it is participial form or adjectival form or how it is formed, if there is any change in the structure, a lot of information can be made. And all those information can be retrieved from the corpus to be found in the dictionary. Then comes definition and description. This is a very crucial because uh, nowadays it is desired that all words presented here should have a full fledged definition because to avoid the question of circularity in the same person, we need to present information in such a way that we can have a descriptive description. If I say, uh, for example, in traditional dictionaries, I can refer to that in the traditional dictionary, say for Bangla, in Bangla, we found a cock, crow, it has been said that kind of bark. So we don't get much information about it from the disease. But we need to have a full present description of the object or the element or the entity in the dictionary. So that much of information may be retrieved from the corpus 
to be far more detailed information provided. So here the argument is that definition and descriptions of the headers should be most elaborately adequately represented into the dictionary and the more load of information would come from the corpus because corpus gives us better scope for better understanding of the words used in different contexts. So <clears throat> it is always better that uh, uh, experts comment that extract information from corpora to define words in multiple ways as defining word from multiple it, a, a angles gives better treatment to the word and that word deserves for better understanding by teachers. So scholars or dictionary developers have already always argued that words should be adequately defined with maximum reference to the context it is used. The semantic information, the information about the meaning of the words is another important area where we need to have reference to context. As you know that when a word is used in a text, it gives many senses, many meanings. So the whole range of meanings, synonyms, or senses, variations, wide scope of these senses that the corpus can, a uh, word can give out, can be captured from the corpus itself. So corpus provides an empirical resource, empirical data, where we can identify a particular word, to identify the total range of meanings it gives and capture those meanings, represent those meanings in the text. Usage. Usage is one of the important clues or important area which cannot be ignored in cases of dictionary. And corpus is the best resource where we can get maximum usage variations of words and other inputs. So no dictionary author can think of all possible kinds of usages of the word. This is not possible. No human being can do that. So, if a word has thousand different usages in the corpus, we can all assemble, assemble together, identify the patterns of usages, classify them, and accordingly present them in the dictionary. This is possible only, or only with reference to the text. Also, if there is some sociolinguistic tags or metadata tagged with the corpus, then also we can enter identify some important issues where such as who uses this particular term or word, where it is used, where it is more frequently used, where it is less frequently used, in which sense it is used in the texts. So all those information uh, become very much useful in the compiling and dictionary. So the realization is something like that. If we think of uh, is realized here uh, uh, in the model given here that if we think that we should develop a uh, dictionary something like that uh, which is entirely corpus based then this diagram or the figure presented here gives a complete picture how we can do so we assume that we have a text corpus at our disposal a very large text corpus as well as we have a speech corpus under our disposal which are combined together can be assembled together or can be utilized directly simultaneously to compile the dictionary. So how this can be done? So if you are developing a general dictionary, we are collecting lexical or word list both from speech corpus as well as from text corpus. The pronunciation of the words, which are head words, which has to be presented there. The speech corpus is the best source where from we can get sufficient amount of information to be presented for the pronunciation of the words. In cases of presenting spelling, we can have information from the text corpus. So text corpus can give us the best suitable uh, platform where we can get necessary data information to furnish information of spelling of the words. Regarding the etymological words, we don't have any source of the speech corpus, neither the text corpus can help us in this. We can find out some other sources where we can to define the word, we can depend on text and speech corpus both. Meaning of the word can be captured both from text and speech corpus. Usage and illustration, other two important areas, can also be substantiated uh, heavily with data and information retrieved from the speech and text corpus. 
So to conclude, what we can say is that in the modern day, a modern day dictionary can never be read without reference to the corpus. Because corpus has better resources, well-planned sources, well-planned data and information to make our dictionaries much more useful, much more relevant for language study, for language development, language documentation, as well as to reflect on the present state of the words used in the study in the language. So what we argue here is that uh, for developing any dictionary, in a, uh, a, a, all, all major dictionary, than any reference dictionary in a language, it is always better and sensible to refer to both speech and text corpora as in the language. Thank you.